Greetings and welcome to this uh, unboxing. I uh, thought I'd share this with you. I just got this in the mail along with uh, Six Fleet. This is a uh, Fifth Fleet from uh, Victory Games, a game designed by Joseph M. Balkowski. He designed uh, all of the uh, Fleet series and he's also um, a writer. Uh, from what I understand, he's got some uh, uh, books with regards to uh, Second World War, I think. The game uh, came out in uh, 1989. You can see here on the bottom, complexity is uh, towards high, solitary, suitability is also high. Um, after watching, after reading uh, a bit on uh, the dev here, uh, Mr. Balkowski and uh, uh, his uh, reputation in game, gaming design, along with uh, watching the original Bernard's uh, playthrough video on the Fifth Fleet, I decided this is the game series that I would be looking at for uh, naval warfare. All right, so that's the back cover as you can see here. We've, we've got uh, 12 scenarios, including nine basic scenarios, three campaign scenarios. Uh, this is the front cover, which looks uh, real nice, to be honest. And yeah, as usual, uh, these games deserve uh, uh, to be on YouTube, okay, because when they came out, uh, we didn't have YouTube. So, let's get on with the shrink lip here. quite a lot so I guess my guess is there's a lot of stuff in here okay and also this is my first uh, victory games uh, purchase so I'm happy with that as well I think this is all upside down so we'll just turn this around here so we got the rules of play here alrighty with some updates from what I see here. Okay. Uh, this is your typical uh, paper from that era. Most uh, Elon Hill games have the uh, same uh, uh, feel to the paper, so I guess that's what was standard uh, at that time. Okay, well, you can see here's summary of uh, counter types, for example. Okay, uh, one thing I like about uh, naval warfare is um, is that uh, well, uh, you get to play uh, with ships, you get to play with uh, airframes. You get to play with submarines, you get to play with uh, torpedoes, uh, air air missiles, and sometimes even some ground units. So, to me, that uh, makes a very complete uh, game. All right? At least that's my uh, thoughts. So, the game uh, rules go up to page 51, from what I'm seeing here. And then we have the scenarios from page 52 to 55. Then we have some designer notes on page 57. And uh, the book ends at page 64 with some terrain summary. And we have your introduction here, your game components. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff here to be reading. All right. In fact, 
max damages. You got your submarine ASW values there, air to air combat. Close defense hex combat. So, yeah, like I was saying, I think uh, uh, you get a lot of uh, bang for your buck here in uh, gaming wise. Alright, detection. So, yeah. Sorry. Terrain summary. And this would be, I guess, your order of battle. Okay. By the way, the uh, game uh, series is still quite alive from what I've... Uh, from what I know, um, there's a Yahoo group, which uh, is quite active, and then we have, uh, I think it's a Japanese-based um, uh, dev that uh, puts out some uh, expansion modules for uh, the Fleet series. Um, which expand on uh, the whole series and even add uh, some modified uh, rules to it. So, yeah, you you can think that this uh, game is still okay, up and going. Uh, although it's out of print, uh, as we all know. Uh, but the good part is that uh, these uh, people over at uh, the Yahoo group and uh, this uh, Japanese uh, development team uh, that's putting out the expansion modules uh, keep the game alive. Although the uh, rules uh, in the uh, expansion modules are in Japanese, uh, you can find the uh, you can find them uh, in uh, English, uh, being translated over at the Yahoo group. From what I understand, okay. And there's plenty of added missions that, uh, I mean, there's people involved. So that makes uh, this game still quite alive. We have a combat summary here for a torpedo, combat optional rules, ASW combat, SSM combat, okay, combat. Results your CRT table here. Ready. Submarine detection table, aircraft carrier cap chart. Zone table. Because you do move from zone to zones, from what I understand. Alright, so that's that. What else? So it's quite messy here because this is backwards. All right, this is your Soviet logistic roster. All right, this is where you keep track. All right, and this is in, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, like your old time uh, notepads. There's plenty of these, but I guess what you would do is. Uh, Make uh, copies of it, all right. And this is like you can see. There's quite a lot of them, but this would be for the Soviets, keeping or bookkeeping purposes, and uh, you know where the hit damages go. I guess you mark these, and this would be for the Soviets, and then what you have here, and this for the Indian surface loop. Soviet player card scenario, blah blah blah. Okay. Let me see if I can. Uh... Yeah, I guess this is all for the Soviet here. From what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's all the. Oh, okay. I guess there's uh, two of them. Sorry. Like I said, this is uh, my first game, so bear with me. And now we have, <laughs> we have, uh, 
We have the United States, okay. No, I was looking for that. Uh, strangely enough, uh, the United States is put sideways. And the uh, Soviet is put that way, so that's strange. Anyway, so we have the United States and we have the Australian uh, surface group here as well. Like I said, this is all for bookkeeping. So, so Arabia, uh, Indonesia, Pakistan. All right. And you would have your back in the back. This is a straight off like this. Okay, your allied United Kingdom. Your allied player record sheet. All right, so we got two of these, one for the Soviets and one for the Allies. Then we have uh, uh, spring 1990. My God, where was I? Where was I? No, oh, anyhow, this <laughs> your catalog here from uh, Victory Games, Avalon Hill stuff. Get into this, but uh, yeah, you can see the catalog here, which is also nice. Okay, so much for that. What else? We have the Allied Scenario deployment card, which is also nice to have. So you would have the West map, and these are the, uh, I guess, the hex. The hexes, and these are the ships, the Essex, the Denver. All right, they're abbreviated. All right, we have an 88. Okay. For scenario 10, for scenario 11. I guess you'd have one of these for each uh, scenario, so you can see that. All right, here comes a good part. Oh, good grief. Thank God for that. We have, uh, I think these are 58, 58 counters. Because I can't stand the half inch counters. They're just too small for me now. These. Now the Kimdung. We have some uh, French uh, naval, uh, uh, some assets here. Oh, we have uh, Italians, Malaysia. Alrighty, Pakistan, alright, and what else, United States, there we go, which is nice, these are all United States, I think we have the Sea Wolf here as well. I can find it, but I think I read somewhere that uh, we have a Sea Wolf class somewhere in here somewhere. Uh, come on, focus. Technology. Okay, and we have our airships here, uh, F-14s, uh, what else do I see here, more F-14s. Some AV8s, F-15s, yeah, goodness, all the goodness, the Essex class, all right, I'm not too, too informed on uh, naval stuff, I did play Dangerous Waters a lot, and uh, 688E back in uh, 2000. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into, I'll get into more uh, unit identification as I learn. And this would be, let's see, where, task group markers, allied mines, Soviet Union. So we have uh, Seawolf, we might have on a cool class as well.
Who knows? All right. Cap markers. Task group, task group markers. Some airframes. Suit 24s. Suit 27s. Suit 23s. Oh man. Yemen. Excited, excited about this, really. Okay. Oh, I forgot to show you the back. Let me show you the back. These are the back of the counters, all right? For example. Basically, because they're hit, you know. You can see that uh, the back of the counters are reduced and hit, my guess. Like most uh, war games. More counters here. This is just a half sheet. So we've got two, two and a half counter sheets. Kawaii. All right. Indonesia. Right here. What's this here? Yeah, these are all Indian. Okay, so that's that. So much for the counters. What else? Oh, no counter. Scenario sheets as before. Scenario 12 with your deployment. Scenario deployment card as far as scenario 10. Oh boy. Uh, that's always good to have. Uh, what else? We got some uh, administrative. Counters here, uh, local, detect, allied, what have you. Okay. Damaged, uh, counter stock, out of fuel, out of ammo. Yeah, I think this series is uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This is something that I really look forward to. So, those are your admin counters, more scenario. All right, this would be scenario 12. I think we had this already. Maybe, I'm not sure. Like I said, this is a pure blind unboxing. What else? Charts and tables, more charts and tables. I guess we have a uh, Sequence of play, I guess we have uh, one for each player. Uh, the, the, the neat thing is that you have all of this on the maps as well. Yeah, we saw this already. At least that's what I think. Okay, maps. Maps pretty good, pretty big. I'm not gonna pull them, I might just pull them out. There's your carrier cap shot. All right. Let's see, one more charge here, sorry. Like I said, you have all your charts on the map, which is good, so you don't have to be fiddling. But it also depends, you know, like, it also depends on if you got space or not, because it also makes the maps bigger. So... That's like one part of the map there. We've got two of them. The hexes are big and nice. Everything looks real clear. Good paper. Sorry, it doesn't fit in the camera, really. Just, uh, we are not uh, NBC or CBS or Fox TV or anything like that. We're just. We have a guy here filming. Okay, more map, more maps. All right, Chagos Archipelago. Some sample. Here you need some more charts. You there. So we have task group display. As I said, everything is there. 
Alright, you still need to do something. Self detection. There are the air combat results. And this would be the second map. Alright. With the Bay of Bongo up there. Although they're, they're big, I think they would fit my table. Yeah, I mean, it's not like one of those super... Uh... Oh, another map. Well, I'll take that back. <laughs> I'll take that back. Uh, let's see. This is... If I can open it. Yeah, I think this is your uh, map movement. Uh... Alright, zones. As you can see, you can move from zone to zone. Okay. According to from what I've seen, Allied Strategic Air Display. Uh, good hard stock. Okay. Yeah, quality quality is real good. Quality is real good. So we got more more maps here. Well, what is this? Uh, I think this is a duplicate. Because uh, I think this is a duplicate. Oh, well, not, not sure. No. This is a bigger representation of the Indian Ocean there. Indian zone there. We'll check that out in a bit. Okay. Either way, the map is really nice looking. We have, uh, so we have three maps for now. We have another one of these, which is badly folded for some reason. Okay, this would be for the Soviets. And we have a tray, which is always great to have your dice. You uh, send me a card. So it says Avalon Hill there. Yeah, they don't use this anymore in anything. Really. Yeah, you do everything on by email. I don't know if we went forward or backwards in this generation. Anyway, do a friend a favor and send him a card. All right. Uh, so this that's that. Like I said, this is helpful because uh, nowadays. You buy a game and you have to, if you want to trade your counters, you have to buy that on your own. Which isn't, uh, which is always a pain in the butt to find sometimes. So that's uh, those charts. We've got uh, three maps here. Three maps. I wonder if this weighed so much. We got these uh, scenario cards. All right, these scenario cards. We got this uh, spring of 1990. I think I was in the army at that time, or no? I did the army way before that. Your uh, what you call it here? Your track sheets. More track sheets. Your road, your, Fleet charts, rule book, Very dicey here. Should have put that in the bottom, I'll do that later. 
All right, one, two, three and a half. All right, and your cover and. Backwards. Whatever. Yep. So, World War Three has broken out of the Soviet Union after sponsor. Sponsoring a bloody coup has moved military units into the Iran to cut off vital Persian Gulf oil shipments to the West. A Soviet MiG-23 squadron has been sent to Bandar Abbas to beef up Iranian Air Force and Soviet submarines lie waiting to attack incoming American convoys. Iranian patrol boats are prepared to join the battle. The United States promising to keep the Gulf open, has dispatched a battle group centered on, on the C.V. Abraham Lincoln to the Strait of Hormuz. Carrier Air Wing 17 provides an umbrella of protection for the vulnerable sur surface vessels. Even now, American frigates have begun escorting MT super tankers into the shallow waters of the Strait. The opening battle for control of the Indian Ocean is about to begin. Fifth Fleet is the fourth game in the VG's popular fleet series, including Sixth Fleet, Second Fleet, and, the Se and Seventh Fleet. It examines the strengths and weaknesses of the Soviet and American navies, plus their prospective allies. In the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean, far from their home bases, each superpower's capable Capital ships, attack submarines, and limited air assets must be protected from the devastating firepower of the modern missile, torpedo, and bomb attacks while inflicting maximum damage on the enemy. The shifting military and political alliance in the area and the presence of the modern Indian Navy are variables that will strongly affect future war in these troubled waters. Fifth Fleet, with the its Multitude of options and strategies continues VG's line of realistic simulations of modern naval combat. So, sorry, there you have it. Anyhow, I hope you uh, enjoyed the unboxing of uh, this fleet series. I'll be doing another one soonish. Okay, of. Um, six foot. Okay, we'll look at that in short. Alrighty, thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you on the next video. Till then, keep on wargaming. Bye bye.